Who's ready for Rhyme Time Television? Then make some noise for your host, Rhyme Time! Welcome to the show! For those who are just tuning in for the first time, my name is Rhyme Time. The show is called Rhyme Time Television. We got this guy on the keyboards, Dino Dino on the drums, and we're going to have a good time. We have a live studio audience. Make a round of applause for yourself. So this is the part of the show where I like to let everybody know a little bit about me. One thing that you may not know about me from looking at me, I've never been very manly. Not a manly guy. Don't like to do manly things. I made a rap show where I get to wear pajamas and a bathrobe and just relax. So that's what I like to do. The hard part about not being very manly is I'm intimidated by manly guys. Like I'm intimidated by my landlord. <laughs> like my landlord is a nice guy, really nice guy. He might watch this show. So Scott, if you're watching, like I appreciate when you fix him a sink. I appreciate when you fix the shower that time, water heater. That thing is a ball of magic to me. I don't know what that is. I don't know what you do. I appreciate it. So I'm not very manly, but I grew up on a farm, which is, you would not guess. Like, these tiny hands have chopped wood. Like, they've held an ax and they've chopped wood. And when I was little and I grew up on the farm, we had sheep, we had pigs, we had chickens. And one of the roosters on the farm used to terrorize me. Like, everybody talks about their childhood bully, but most childhood bullies are human beings and not mine. Mine was a rooster with an attitude. <laughs> so my dad would say, go get the eggs. And I'd say, okay, I'm gonna go get the eggs. And every time, from behind a tree or behind the coop, you never knew where he was coming from, you know, the rooster would just pop his head out and he'd just book it at me. Every morning before school, I would just be running, just not manly, not, not good form. I was just flailing limbs, <laughs> screaming. So this chicken, this rooster, it was a rooster, I mean, he had talons. He used to just jump on my back as I was running and tackle me to the ground and just peck me and just teach be a man, be a man, grow a pair. So you grow up on a farm, you find out what happens to livestock when they get to be a certain age. And it came time for that rooster's time to get, well, there's kids in the crowd. So we gave the, we gave the rooster a haircut. <laughs> so it came time to give the rooster a haircut, a Sweeney Todd haircut. So I can't wait. I'm like seven years old and I'm bloodlusting for this chicken. I'm like, Dad, let me do it. Let me do it. Let me give him this haircut. So you know what happens when a chicken gets a haircut? It just runs around like crazy. So what happens is it gets the haircut and it beelines it for me, a seven-year-old child. <laughs> And I'm running again, no, no! It hits the back of my foot and it takes me down one last time. So let's give a round of applause for that rooster who I hope <laughs> never made it to heaven. So thank you for watching episode two of Rhyme Time Television. I really appreciate it. Uh, we got a lot of great stuff. We've got actor Whit Hertford on the show today. We've got a game show. We've got live music from Rhyme Time Television. And uh, we've got a cartoon. We got everything. So make a round of applause for the live studio audience. If you're watching it at home, you missed it. <laughs> oh, maybe. Thank you guys so much. Stick around. We're going to have a word from our sponsors. This episode of Rhyme Time Television has been brought to you by support from Muse Music Cafe in Provo, Utah, Two Gumshoe, Toaster Shades, Keep Your Eyes Looking Fresh, and Shallow Hal the Video Game. 
13 years in the making, this action-packed comedy romp lets you relive all your favorite Shallow Hal moments. It's the biggest love story ever told, and it's only available on Nintendo GameCube. Welcome back to Rhyme Time Television, Episode 2. Thank you so much. We have a very special guest that I'd like to bring out right now. This guy has been in Jurassic Park, Full House, uh, one of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. He's currently an actor, filmmaker. This guy is so awesome, and I would trade lives with him in a second. Everybody make some noise for Whit Hertford. <laughs> You're Hello. Scotty, you're, you're very moist. <laughs> it's okay. It's for you. <laughs> no, I, I, mean, I mean... I've got a lot of layers. <laughs> yeah. I've been like mentally preparing to sit down because I realized I wore my jeans that have a hole by my um, kibbles and bits. Do you want to stand? I'll, no, I want to try it. Okay, well, we're going to try it. <laughs> Slowly... <laughs> Nice and easy. Wow. Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> That's <a> sitting down <laughs> music. Wow. <laughs> Did you know you can't call this Indian style anymore? Native American style. Yeah. I heard someone tried to tell me to call it crisscross applesauce. Criss -cross applesauce. It's <laughs> not. Oh. I guarantee you it's not. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Obama. <laughs> what is this place? So this is Rhyme Time Television. Okay. It's a show I made uh, to show off me. Uh, victory. Thank you. So you were in Jurassic Park. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm 65 years old, by the way. <laughs> A lot I'm of these people don't know I what that good. is. So you look good. good. Uh, and you were on uh, you were on a lot of TV shows and a lot of movies that people love, and including one of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Yeah. I love those movies. Yeah. I mean, I had what's called uh, a weird childhood. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, my friends would go to soccer practice afterwards, and I would hit uh, the 101 freeway traffic and do auditions and driving a very small Lamborghini <laughs> not, by, not by myself actually no I was chauffeured in a minivan by a mother and usually snacks like Pringles so let's uh, so was it your parents who really wanted to get you into acting because I know your siblings acted as well yeah it was kind of a family weird trait um, I, it, nothing was forced nothing was like showbiz, you know, uh, horror story or stage mom or anything like that, but we never hated it until we were in high school. And then I was like, all right, can I speak? Um, <laughs> mom, I want to play basketball and make out with girls and be normal. Can we not do sitcoms anymore? I like that your teenage rebellion was like, I don't want to be a movie star. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was like, can I please go see an R-rated movie? And then you were like, can I please get out of my contract for this R-rated movie? <laughs> true, true story. I mean, it's weird though, right? Because it's like you have an affinity for a guy like Freddy Krueger when you're 10 years old. You're like, ah, I love that guy. And that, that's a weird thing for a 10-year-old to go through. Did you see that movie that you were in? Like, how old were you when you first saw? Ten. You were 10, yeah. like right after? Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Yeah. I was um, 29 when I, my mom let me see that movie. <laughs> It's a, it's a terrible movie. Like, just not not graphic. In the best way, though. Uh, I mean, even Nightmare fans that are like, and horror film fans, they're weird. Low it, bars. Yeah. We're talking low bars. Yeah, they have an interesting smell to themselves and things like that. They, they will routinely be like, hey, um, it's not my favorite. Like, like they always want to tell me, like, the fifth Thanks. one kind of sucks. And I'm like, it's not my fault. It's more Freddy's fault. Yeah. He's barely there. I mean, he's, and in a lot of the senses of the word, he's barely there. <laughs> so what are you working on now? Because you're, you're living in Utah, but you're about to move to the UK, is that right? Yeah, I, uh, I was in LA for 30 years, whatever, and then I always have to kind of take a bit of a sabbatical from LA because uh, it can suck your life. And so um, I have been doing a lot of different ventures that they make me more excited, they get me a little more creatively fulfilled, but they're not necessarily big money makers. And so, um, they're small independent films. Yeah, precisely. Uh, but right, you're happy, right? Very. And moist. Very, very. Uh, 
So sometimes you got to break from the machine, and I decided to get in my, my Scion and cruise up here and live here because I wanted to write the next uh, uh, film project that I wanted to do with my film company, Sneak Attack, is all set here, set in rural Utah. Uh, so what's the movie called? The movie's called Wildlife, and it's kind of um, No Country for Old Men, Taxi Driver, a little bit of Fargo, but set in rural Utah. I really wanted to show the authentic Utah County. I felt like both ends of the spectrums had been shown. You either have like the sensational like, ooh, they wear long dresses and they, their name is Jebediah and they live in the desert. I know that guy. Right. <laughs> or you got the other end, which I think is just as not accurate. Right. Yeah, yeah, where it's kind of these cartoon figures with name badges and people make fun of them and make musicals about them. And I didn't, you know, I didn't think that that was... Genuine. I didn't so think this authentic. new movie, um, this new movie, you have some people attached to it, right? You're working with a couple people that I think the crowd will probably know. Yeah, um, John Heater has been a friend of mine for a while, and uh, he, he he's great. Um, so John Heater was Napoleon Dynamite, and yeah, Napoleon Dynamite. Give it a fair shake. Come on. John's a much better actor than, than in anyone in Hollywood in L.A. gives him credit for. And I think he's hungry, and I think that there's, there's an opportunity. And so I wrote this role for him that is this deputy character that's a, a husband and a father. And now this is, will be his first dramatic acting role? This is his first stab at doing something where he's not playing a goofball. So he's attached, and then uh, Joshua James, who's a musician primarily here in Yeah, Utah. you guys know Joshua James, right? Yeah, he's he's rad. He's magic. Yeah, and he's real uh, good. why did I just do that? That was weird. Cool, man. Uh, do you Gosh. hear my sweet home Alabama I'm like, story? I'm like a grandpa. I'm like I'm like, hey, you want to wear this original? <laughs> I'm like being very. I do. I do want to wear this original. So that is an underrated candy. It really is. What is your favorite candy? That's so easy. Nerds rope. Next question. Nerds rope. Next question. Uh, who was your first celebrity crush? Uh, well, Jody Sweeten and the girl from uh, Poltergeist, Tide. The old lady. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn. <laughs> no, but you know it was so mean, and I'm I'm screwing myself by even being vocal about this. But you know, several years ago when Facebook was pretty new, and they did like the doppelganger yeah. week, where everyone was like, "Oh, this is the funniest thing." Yeah, Jonah Hill. Somebody, yeah, somebody threw the old lady from Poltergeist as my <laughs> doppelganger, <laughs> and I was like, Simon Birch, maybe. <laughs> Willow, maybe. <laughs> Uh, a hybrid of Skinny Jack Black and Sadder Elijah Wood. Maybe. <laughs> Danny DeVito's lesbian sister. Okay. <laughs> if he had one. And I shaved. Oh, you are a delight. Oh, uh, this was just first base. Uh, so, yeah, Josh James. Back to that. Circle the wagons. Um, Josh uh, is composing this movie. He's going to be kind of the the musical narration of it and so all of the film is going to have original joshua james music it'll be really really interesting i'm quite excited well i'm excited for this project and so uh on upcoming episodes of rhyme time and on the rhyme time page we're going to keep you guys posted about how that film's coming along cool uh thank you so much for coming this you was bet, awesome man. yeah so uh make a round of applause for whit hertford fellas if you could play his music again i think we'll dance <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. <sighs> punch, punch, punch the pinata. Punch, punch, punch the pinata. Just ball up your fingers and punch it harder. Punch, punch, punch the pinata. Punch, punch, punch the pinata. Punch, punch, punch the pinata. Punch it in its face. Welcome back to Rhyme Time Television. This is a segment we like to call Punch That Pinata. We've got a friend. His name is Michelangelo. He's about to get punched by our other friend, Garen. Garen, are you ready? I'm ready. Crowd, are you ready to help Garen punch that pinata? Yeah. Whatever's in the pinata is yours, Garen, so I need you to just start swinging. Ready, set, punch that pinata. Punch it, punch that pinata. Oh, punch, punch, punch the pinata. Oh, wow. Um. 
So not only did Garen punch that pinata really well, but the prize inside uh, flew out. <laughs> he got one. It's over here. It's a, it's a, it's a Blu-ray of Dirty Dancing. <laughs> Woo! Dirty bit. <laughs> Do you want to give that a couple more punches? I feel like he, well, this, if you look, if you look like the side worth, right? of his head is super dented. You did it once and you split the back open and he went. <laughs> punch, punch, punch the pinata. Punch, punch, punch the pinata. Punch it in his face. Now punch it hard. Punch it, punch, punch the pinata. Wow. Wow, that is punch, that pinata! So I wanted to give you a pair of Toaster Shades from our sponsor, Toaster Shades. They're fantastic. Make a round of applause for our sponsor, Toaster Shades. I also wanted to give you a hat from Two Gumshoe. That is another one of our clothing sponsors. It's a fantastic hand-stitched Hawaiian lady hat. All right, is it, does it? Well. That's a good looking hat. That's a good looking hat right there. He got his toaster shades. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, hey, this is running time. Uh, this is a segment I like to call cartoons, dude. And uh, this cartoon is from a Cal Art student named Paul Flores, and it's called Camping Chaos. It's really great. This is one of my favorite segments of the show because honestly, it requires the least amount of work from me. So enjoy the cartoon, dude! Everybody's welcome, and everybody's fine. Whether old, young, tall, short, they're great, including mine. So bring in the nerds, party with jocks and squares. Do what you do, wear what you wear, whatever you want. Why would we care? We're having a party. The party's here. We don't care how you do your hair. We're having a party. We're happy you're here. Having a party. We're happy you're here. You're happy you're here. Throw your hands in the air. Do what you want to do. Wear what you want to wear. Having a party. We're happy you're here. Happy you're here, baby. Happy you're here. Happy Happy your hair, throw your hands in the air. Yo, play that track, and when it's over, need to play it back. So, you got a pick of the rat pack on the backpack with the straps flat, no flack from the man that raps. Looking like you wanna dance more, walking on up just to rock a dance floor. Rock it, stop, feeling original. Clothing's important, but rhythm is critical. 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 Having a party, we're happy you're here. Having a party, we're happy you're here. Do what you wanna do, wear what you wanna wear. Having a party, we're happy you're here. Cowboy hats with jewelry, socks, sandals, skinny jeans, floral tees with lots of teens, looking like the movie screen. Halloween, Halloween, every day is Halloween. Tiny, creepy, spooky things shining on the movie screen. Halloween. Halloween, every day is Halloween. Scary, creepy, spooky things shining on the movie screen. Put your hands up, put your hands up. How you doing, Utah? I said, how you doing, Utah? When I say Utah, y'all say hip 
hip-hop Utah, hip-hop. Utah. Hip-hop. When I say Utah, y'all say hip-hop Utah. Hip-hop. You- Having a party, we're happy, yo, here. Having a party, we're happy, yo, here. Do what you wanna do, wear what you wanna wear. Thank you for coming, we're happy, yo, here. Happy, yo, here, baby, happy, yo, here. Happy, yo, here, throw your hands in the air. Do what you wanna do, wear what you wanna wear. Thank you for coming, we're happy, yo, here. Propaganda here tonight. We're having a party, we're happy you're here. We're having a party, we're happy you're here. Happy you're here, throw your hands in the air. We're having a party, we're happy you're here. Y'all make some noise! Welcome back to Rhyme Time Television. This is a segment we like to call Meet the Crowd, where we interview a member of our studio audience. Uh, which episodes did you watch today? One, two, and three? I watched all three. She's been to all three tapings. <laughs> so tell us a little about, about yourself. Um, my name is Eden Wen. I met Scott, actually, or Rhyme Time, because he came on Come to... On, <laughs> I know, Come I'm on. so sorry. Can we get that? Uh, on my, sh- my own show, The Couch Series, uh, where we basically just showcase musicians every week. And we do interviews as well, but you had a really, this was an awesome show. Thank you so much. Yeah. Tell me more about what you liked about my show. Uh, you, specifically. I thought that's, I, you yeah. know, I thought. Yeah. I'm getting that answer a lot lately. That's true. <laughs> Current celebrity crush. That is a good question. It's a great question. Dane DeHaan? I thought he's... you were going to say Dane Cook. <sighs> well, he's good too. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Dane DeHaan? He's the, he played the new Green Goblin in the new Spider-Man. So you not know Andrew Garfield? No. You like the bad boys? I do. What about James Franco or uh-huh. Willem Dafoe? Willem Dafoe is Just great. Just a long list of hot men who played Green Goblin. <laughs> 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 Though, have you seen him in Life Aquatic? Who is he in Life Aquatic? He's oh, a Willem Klaus. Dafoe? Yeah. Yes. What you meant. He's good. He's mm. a very tender man. Who was your first celebrity crush? That would have to be, um, shoot, I forgot his name, from Sandlot. Benny the Jet Benny Rodriguez. Jet, yeah. So Benny the Jet Rodriguez. Uh, do you know what he's doing now? No. What is he he's doing? He's a fireman. <laughs> you gotta Google that. I just found just a wait. new celebrity crush. He just <laughs> he just replaced Dane. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite candy bar? Snickers. Who is your least favorite person? Oh. <laughs> I love everyone. Okay, that's nice. So check out the Couch <laughs> series. This was Meet the Crowd. Thank you so much. Thank I'm you. Still, like, is it too much sweat? Like, uh, this is kind of ridiculous <laughs> at this point, right? It's kind of uh, it's unnerving. Thank you so much, Eden. Thank you. Thanks for being in the crowd. <laughs>